Basically, what I seen was a uh, full drive driving at a hell of a speed. Crossing the white lines, one side to the other, driving like a friggin' idiot. Mr. McGee decided to take evasive action. By the time the police apprehended Eugene McGee, um, six hours had passed. The police didn't do any blood alcohol test. The court heard Mr. McGee is such a well-known local barrister, the DPP can't find anyone to prosecute him. Eugene McGee was charged with causing death by dangerous driving and failing to stop and render assistance. And he pled not guilty to the cause death by dangerous driving, but he did plead guilty to the failing to stop and render assistance. The Crown Prosecutor, Teresa Anderson, said McGee knew exactly what he was doing on that fateful day near Freeling in November 2003. But the court also heard McGee had been fined for speeding six times since 1997. There was subsequently evidence obtained via his uh, credit card statement which indicated that there'd been three bottles of wine and uh, one um, stubby of beer uh, purchased during the course of the afternoon. After the impact, it appears that Mr McGee drove via a side road back to Kapunda. He waited some time at a quarry near Kapunda, eventually returning to his mother's home where he met up with his brother. Eventually, uh, Craig, his brother, uh, drove uh, Eugene McGee uh, in Craig's vehicle, I think, uh, to Adelaide, where he was then able to meet up with his uh, uh, legal advisers. We have a period of almost six hours that Eugene McGee had been absent from the police's presence. There is no doubt in my mind that Eugene McGee's actions were very orchestrated and that were planned to the last minute on that night. I believe they were acting with the intent of evading police for as long as possible and reducing any chance there was of Eugene McGee being um, tested for alcohol. Eugene McGee's knowledge of the law put him in a privileged position. He knew that the penalty for avoiding police was far less than it would be if he was confronted or, or handed himself over to the police and was found to have a positive blood alcohol reading. Professor McFarlane said McGee told him of traumatic incidents in his past career as a police officer where he had to deal with disfigured bodies. It was in the last days of the trial that the defence produced a psychiatrist's report suggesting that McGee failed to stop and render assistance because he was suffering a dissociative state. It suggested he'd had a traumatic life as a police officer. So uh, the end result was that uh, the defence evidence on that point went unchallenged. Good evening. First tonight, hit-run lawyer Eugene McGee has left court a free man after escaping a jail term for killing a cyclist. Instead, he's been fined and banned from driving, a sentence that's been met with outrage, shock and disbelief. The verdict was not guilty of death by dangerous driving. He was found guilty of driving without due care. There was this absolute sense of disbelief of anger, of despair, that this could happen, that someone responsible for killing a man, leaving him by the side of the road, failing to render assistance, just got off with a fine. The Commissioner found that the prosecution should have called expert psychiatric evidence to offer an alternative view to that expressed by Professor McFarlane. What people don't realise is that Mr McGee himself had been the victim of a hit and run accident. He was riding his bicycle to university when he was hit by an elderly woman. He sustained a significant back injury but chose not to prosecute her. I believe that that accident was a significant factor in impacting and influencing how he responded to the collision with Mr Humphrey. In forensic matters, I think expert opinion always needs to be very carefully tested.